MCQ set to one of satellite communication. First question, a geostationary satellite appears stationary because option A has zero velocity, option B rotate in the opposite direction of earth, option C has the same angular velocity as earth, option D is at a very high altitude. The answer is option C. A geostationary satellite appears, appears stationary because it is having the same angular velocity as earth. Now, next question. The altitude of a geostationary satellite is approximately option A, 3600 km, option B, 12000 km, option C, 22300 miles, which is approximately equal to 36000 km, option D, 1500 km. The answer is for a geostationary satellite, the altitude is 36,000 km that is approximately equal to 22,300 miles. Option C. Next question. The first communication satellite was option A, Aribata, option B, Insat 1A, option C, Telstar 1, option D, Intelsat. The answer is Telstar 1. Next question. The Kepler's first law states that the orbit of a planet or a satellite is option A, circular, option B, parabolic, option C, elliptical, option D, hyperbolic. The answer is the orbit of a planet or a satellite will be elliptical, option C. The Kepler's second law is also known as law of eclipse, law of equal areas, law of periods, law of energy. We know that the Kepler's second law is known as the law of equal areas. Option B. Now, next question. The Kepler's third law relates. Option A, orbital velocity and mass. Option B, orbital period and radius. Option C, antenna gain and power. Option D, inclination and altitude. Kepler's third law, it relates the orbital period and the radius. So, option B. According to Kepler's third law, the square of orbital period is proportional to option A, cube of semi-major axis, option B, cube root of altitude, option C, orbital velocity, option D, mass of satellite. We know that the Kepler's third law relates the square of orbital period to the cube of semi-major axis. So, answer is option A. Next question, a geostationary satellite must have Option A, 90 degree inclination. Option B, 0 degree inclination. Option C, 45 degree inclination. Option D, 180 degree inclination. A geostationary satellite must have 0 degree inclination. That is option B. Next is, a geostationary satellite completes one revolution in Option A, 12 hours. Option B, 48 hours. Option C, 24 hours. Option D, 6 hours. The answer is 24 hours. That is for a geostationary satellite. MEO satellites are mainly used for option A weather monitoring, option B navigation, option C geotv broadcasting, option D deep space imaging. Answer is option B. That is navigation or GPS. Next question. The point in an elliptical orbit which is farthest from the earth is called option A, perigee point, option B, apogee, option C, nadir, option D, zenith. The point in an elliptical orbit which is farthest from the earth is called a, option B, that is apogee point. Now, next question, the velocity of a satellite is highest at option A, apogee, option B, perigee, option C, heo, option D, geo. The velocity of a satellite is highest at, we know that it is the perigee point. A passive satellite, option A, only amplifies the signal, option B, only reflects the signal, option C, processes the signal on board, option D, is only used in geo. We know that a passive satellite will only reflect the signal. Okay, so the answer is option B. Next question. The coverage area of a satellite is called as its option A, beam width, option B, constellation, 
option c footprint option d transponder the coverage area of a satellite is called its footprint option c which orbit is characterized by an inclination of 90 degree relative to earth equator option a geostationary orbit option b no sun synchronous orbit option c polar orbit option d molnia orbit the answer is option c polar orbit according to kepler second law when a satellite is at perigee its speed is we know that the perigee point is the closest point so the speed will be maximum so answer is option b next question kepler's third law shows that orbital period increases when option a satellite mass increases option b inclination increases option c orbital radius increases option d antenna gain increases we know that the third law shows that the orbital period will increase when the orbital radius increases the answer is option c next question the eccentricity of a per perfect circular orbit is option a 0 option b 0.5 option c 1 option d 2 for a per perfect circular orbit the eccentricity will be 0 that is option the line joining the apogee and perigee is known as option a line of nodes option b line of upsides option c meridian option d altitude line the line which is joining the apogee and perigee is called of line of upsides answer is option b next question geo satellite request that for dash for the global coverage option a one satellite option b three satellites option c 24 satellites option d 12 satellites we know that the geo satellites request three satellite for the global coverage so the answer is option b next question leo satellite experience high doppler shift because they have option a high altitude option b low altitude and high speed option c very low inclination option d circular orbit the answer is option b they are having low altitude and also high speed 